Hello, everyone. Welcome to this rookie walkthrough for the Koi Nine Hill Cup. Starting off, hole number one, par four, three, two top, one left. I could have safely stuck with that three bars of top spin, as you will shortly see here. I do have this extra mile level six at maximum distance with my navigator ball, and I have that red ring up against the left rough. Now, remember, depending on the level of your extra mile will depend on the size of your rings. That goes for every club in the game. You know, you'll find that these clubs like the extra mile with less accuracy will have bigger rings. You're going to see the sniper coming right up. You'll see how much smaller those rings are. That's because of that higher accuracy level. So 10% max there. Nothing fancy. Just getting it down and giving us a nice look for the second shot. Now, two ways you can play here. Right there where it lands, you could just adjust spin mid right, right there and play it as a bounce over. I do like this rough bump option i think it gives us a nice little look at it one top one left is what i went with here now it does actually slow down a little bit i probably could have had this ball guide through the hole about a green square or so however i do think this will be the predominant way to play this hole come tournament time i definitely tried to use as few fancy balls in this walkthrough as possible i think i used a titan ball uh, maybe two times and at least one of those times I didn't need to. So hopefully this is going to be really approachable for all the people. We'll see you on hole number two. All right. So hole number two, this part three is really tough. Um, I just, I just want to try to find a way to get the birdie. I'm going to show you a couple of ways here. Three right uh, with this katana at max distance with the backbone. Now I do end up giving this one, um, no, I thought I was going to give it a bit of top spin there, but 0% max is the adjustment here. So 1.5 rings. The difficult thing with this fairway, obviously, is there's no flat landing positions. There's not really anywhere else. Now, the second shot I'll show you here will give you a bit of an option. Just about a quarter ball of right curl here is my plan to try to bring this one in closer to the pin. And you'll see it works out quite nicely. Definitely worth a look here, but I'll show you another way. Okay, so hole number two, once again, I would say this is my favorite way to play it here. As you can see, got a lot of room to work with with our Guardian here, even with a Navigator Ball. I'm playing this from 10% minimum distance. Now, you see, I try max back, one right. I end up settling in on six back and one right because I felt like that was just going to be a little bit too much. Down that slope is a slippery slope. I'm trying to land up on this edge. It seems to be a little bit more consistent than some of the other landing positions. Um, this is always going to be a work in progress. Don't waste too many practice tokens on this hole. Okay, guys, like get in there, get your birdie. And as long as we avoid these bunkers, even into the headwind here, you can see I do give it to the bottom of the teeth over power. There's nothing special. Uh, just hitting up on top. Lands nice. He comes in with very nice speed. I think we could probably make something work there. All right, welcome to hole number three. This is our first par five, and I'm showing you this headwind example once again to kind of give you an idea of what can happen here. I've got a navigator ball and an extra mile, 4.5 top, one bar of left spin. Now you see how I've got that second bounce up on that second fairway. That is the intended landing position of the second bounce, okay? And where you see my opponent's little square up there near that red marker is the intended landing position. I'd like to see us get into Goliath range for the second shot, but I want you to see how this plays with a reasonably low level extra mile, a power one ball, and clipping the rough here. We're just gonna get the edge you'll see right there. Ooh, just barely, but that's going to just kind of leave us in the middle or so of this fairway pad. And that's actually not a bad place to be because what that does is it puts us into sniper range. And I like playing rough bumps with snipers. And I know you probably do too. So it gives us a nice little bit to work with. You can see we're beautifully at mid sniper. So of course, I decide that 10% is a good place to start. And I've uh, got the ball guide lined up just a little bit through the hole because of course we are playing into headwind. And 10% mid, I end up playing zero zero spin on this so that's a really good place to start of course you know if you've got a strong tailwind here things might look a little differently you have to accommodate for the changing circumstances as we make our way through the round but perfect ball is always the plan no matter what get that bounce get that roll there we go baby we're gonna save it for when it counts i'll see you on hole number four all right, so hole number four. Guys, I haven't talked much about the new hole positions, but I really think they're quite good. I think they've made a difficult course maybe even easier. This is another example of how this is really, really approachable. I do play this one at 25% mid, but I feel like if we'd played it at 30% mid here, we would have got this drop. Four back, one left, and I've got the second bounce there. You see just 
onto the green. What that does, it sets us up very, very nicely for, I would say, a very makeable, makeable par three, especially here from the front tee. And I'm not sure how and why this would be that much more difficult from the second tee and beyond. But this is the kind of setup that, you know, I think is going to give us all a really good opportunity. I expect there to be very low scores, even for a nine hole cup with new positions. Look at this. Just a tiny bit more adjustment there. And we're going to get that boom. Okay, so hole number five. This is a par four. And I think... If you find yourself in headwind, play to the right-hand side and leave yourself a wood club. Otherwise, you probably want to bring a Titan Ball or a Zerk here, and you'll see why that Zerk would play quite nicely. And I'm just going max top here. That's 4.5, one bar of left spin. I'm going to make an adjustment here at 10% maximum distance. Yeah, and uh, I do have an indication here that we're going to play maximum over power. Now, I don't push this back up because I don't want to have the full speed of that needle whipping back and forth. But we do try to hit perfect here. That is important. This is a very fine margin. So if you're not interested in gripping it and ripping it and hitting it into a kind of narrow spot like that, and excuse me, still clipping the rough here, uh, you do want to try to play to that right side and leave yourself a wood club. You can even bounce on that little iron. However, that little island. However, now I find myself, I would say, roughly in a medium distance sniper situation. Um, I do play this one with 2.5 bars of backspin and determine that bouncing right on the green here seems to be the most consistent outcome. The first time I came through here, I did play it with uh, a bounce on the fringe, and I think it kicked a little to the left there. And, you know, there's there's no guaranteed spot that you can just bounce the ball and make it go in its magical position. But this year seems like a pretty darn good way for us to put ourselves in a consistent position to hopefully dial this one in for eagle when it counts. So that strong crosswind gave us just, oh, baby, such a close chance there. I'll see you on hole number six. All right, so hole six, this is a par five, and I decide here to go with the big topper, and I really don't need to kind of get it super duper far because leaving yourself in wood range here still seems to be a very good place. So I've got max top two left here, and I do end up putting that red ring just touching the rough on the left-hand side. I do that to kind of quote unquote great proof myself because if you have that yellow ring right up against the left rough and you hit a great left you're going to be in the rough for sure especially with the big topper it's got a lower accuracy rating than that extra mile so you need to be careful with that now i'm not doing anything crazy here no push up no overpower no curl just a clean easy straightforward shot just to get this one beautifully down the fairway without any disturbances in the force so there we go. Puts us right in the middle of the fairway just before that shadow. Kind of gives you a bit of an indicator. 354. Now, from there, I do find myself in about a minimum distance sniper. You see, we've got a lot of room to work with here. We could definitely play this one. Uh, I don't know why I even recommended Titan. We should probably just play a Navigator here. Um, but anyway, whatever ball you want to play. This is one of the ones at the beginning I said we could play with a lower ball. And I actually come at this one with 1.5 bars of backspin. I got a couple ticks of left spin there. I don't think that's entirely necessary. Second bounce on the fringe. And I really think this is going to be the look. Uh, going to be the way we're going to play it. Now, we definitely could count rings from min here to give a little bit more accurate slider percentage. But considering we're playing from the front tee, I think this is going to give us a very nice look at it. So a little bit of backspin. If you've got a stronger win, you're probably going to play two, two and a half back, you know, something like that. Uh, especially if you've got a four, you know, four plus win there. But anyway, I think this is a very, very, very clean look at it. A little bit less adjustment there. And I think we would have been dead money in the cup. We'll see you on hole number seven. Okay, hole number seven, this par three, once again, I think this new hole position actually makes this hole playable. It's been so hard for so long that setting it up here on the left-hand side, three bars of backspin, about a half a bar of left spin here into this, you know, gentle right to left crosswind. And I feel like this is something that we can totally dial in. Being able to land here on the left and not needing to go with a massive amount of right spin also means that we can keep playing with cheap balls. Just don't need a whole bunch of back spin or side spin here. You can just kind of go right at it, right? So I definitely think, you know, people with a higher level Goliath might want to try a Katana rough bump over there on the left. Um, you know, I think that's definitely a play that could be played, but most rookie players don't have that high a level of a Goliath. 
This one might even be pushing the limits. But as you can see, boy, oh boy, we're getting very, very close there. We'll see you on the final par four, hole eight. Hole number eight. Now, I, you could definitely play this with an extra mile, but I think bringing the big topper here, getting that extra top spin, kind of max top, two and a half bars of right spin here. And that katana, I used that to give a little more distance so we can land further up on this skinny patch of rough and also to get that extra side spin. You do want to use some curl here. Definitely could have gone a full ball of right curl if you want, but this works out absolutely just fine. You got to hit perfect though. That's where the extra mile might be a better choice for some players, but I really like the amount of distance you get here having this top spin. It puts us into a very nice position and you know I'm going to keep going with it. Second shot, I play it here with the thorn, and I've determined that I think 0% max would have been the best adjustment here. I do set it up there right on the fringe with one bar of backspin, and that seems to set us up with a very nice look here at the eagle. Now, lots of long par fours on this course, as always, traditionally. I think that's really going to be the make or break for most players in this tournament. There's certainly opportunities in the pars threes, fours, and fives. The par threes are quite difficult. The par threes and fours, I think, is really where we're going to make our major scoring moves in the tournament. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, now would be a great time to do so. You don't miss so that you don't miss out on any of my future Golf Clash content. Ooh, baby, we're going to save the good ones for the tournament. I'll see you on hole number nine. Hole number nine, and this one is it's kind of difficult. I don't think that many rookie players here are going to be getting an albatross. You can definitely play this drive with any club you like. I just went with this rock because the distance of mine allowed me to just kind of max overpower it and put it in a really good position at the end of this right-hand side, right side fairway. You might want to use a quarterback here. You might want to play this with the extra mile. What Really, whatever you like to do, just get this one down to the end of this first fairway, very close as you see here, and it's going to set us up for a very nice second shot. Now, second shot, the big dog here, I think is absolutely the play. I'm going to go six top two right spin here and we're adjusting this one from 10 percent medium distance so with this club that's max top max right i have the half that red ring on the right hand side and like i said a medium distance adjustment is what i'm actually adjusting here so that'll be 1.6 rings on the pole and you know i just think this is going to be a great tournament um that nine hole situation is it's a lot of fun they do it very well max right curl here don't take anything off that give it all the right curl and with a little bit of luck and a good wind angle, you get yourself up there on the green. Might just be on the fringe. And I'm just going to quickly show you this putt here because I know it looks fairly innocent. But I just want you to be aware that this hole can bite you in many, many ways. It comes in ooh, very steep. Just be very, very careful with that. Guys, I look forward to seeing you out in the course. Good luck in the coin nine hole.